Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. I recently did a review of my brand new Siegel 1963 watch. And I was thinking the other day, maybe I ought to avoid using the chronograph a whole lot because surely it would tank the mainspring, right? Tonight we're going to dig into how the chronograph components on a Siegel movement work and we'll answer the burning question of should you avoid using your chronograph feature? So let us begin. So here is the seagull once again. Man, this thing is beautiful. Now I did a little bit of reading on the movement that's inside this. It's an ST19, and it's actually a movement designed to be a chronograph. So it doesn't have a chronograph module attached to it. It's integrated. And I also read that there's a third sub complication in this movement that really doesn't do anything. But as you can see, that isn't a problem with this watch as it's a panda dial and only has the two sub dials. And when we operate it, it sweeps nicely. And here's the chronograph sub dial there. And then we'll stop it and pop this back. And it pops right back. Now, I'm not a watchmaker, so I'm not about to open this thing up and start poking around the movement to see how it works. Fortunately for us, we have an exhibition case back. So let's see what happens when we operate the chronograph looking at the movement itself. So when we push this, we see that it engages these wheels here. This little arm here, release them. And then we're going to push this again to stop it. And now they've been disengaged. And then we push this and it resets. So this center wheel here operates the chronograph hand. And let me get this running so you can see how it resets. Now it's kind of difficult to see, but there's an odd shaped bit of metal that's attached to that center wheel. And what happens is this arm comes in here and pushes on that and the shape of that metal causes the hand to go straight up. There, you can see part of it right there. Right there, right near the light there. So when this comes up under it and pushes on it, the smallest part is down here at the bottom. So it forces the hand around and it's shaped to where no matter where that hand is, it comes straight back up. And here is the key to answering our question of whether we should be using the chronograph very often or not. These two wheels here are actually part of the chronograph and you'll notice that they're moving. So whether we're using the chronograph or not, these chronograph wheels are engaged with the mainspring. So that's pretty cool. No matter how much you use the chronograph, it actually has zero impact on the mainspring. So when we start the chronograph, these hands that are already moving just engage with that center wheel, which is our chronograph hand. That's the only difference that happens when we're using it versus not using it. And when we stop it, it just disengages them, but they're still moving. They're still being powered by the mainspring and then reset that. So that's pretty cool. You can use this chronograph all you want, and it really makes no difference as far as the power reserve. It's going to have as much power whether you're using it or not. So if you own one of these, feel free to time anything you want to. But according to the uh, instruction booklet, don't reset it until you first stopped it. And having looked at how it works, that makes sense. Because if we're using the chronograph here, these wheels are engaged with this center wheel. If I try and reset it, it's going to cause a problem. 
because this is going to try and force that center hand straight up and down, but these are still engaged with it. So you definitely want to stop it first, which will release that center wheel. Then you can reset it. I'm not sure exactly what it would do if you tried to do it while these are still engaged, but I feel like it wouldn't be good. So definitely heed their advice and do not do that. So yeah, that's how the chronograph parts work. These are brilliant watches and so affordable. I highly recommend Siegel if you're looking for a mechanical chronograph watch. I am super impressed with this one. And if you like smaller pieces, this one's 38, but it actually wears more like a 36. And if I remember correctly, there are size options, so you could go with the larger one too, if that's what you're after. And all the different colorways are just amazing. So cool. So there you have it, the brilliance behind the chronograph components of a Siegel 1963. And you can use your chronograph all you want. It's not going to drain your mainspring any more than it's already being drained. Thanks for watching.